Hi, grade nines. Uh, today we're going to take a look at astronomy, the historical overview. So this will actually take two lessons to complete um, because I want you to watch some supplemental videos of, of some of the scientists. So hopefully you'll find it's pretty interesting. Well, I think so anyways. Um, so hopefully you'll like it. Okay. Oopsie. So first off, what is astronomy? Uh, we already defined this at one point, but I want you to copy this down here. So the science, so copy this down here to there. The scientific study of celestial bodies, space, and the physical universe as a whole. So pause the video and write that one down. And then celestial bodies is the next definition that we need to look at. And what that is, it's the collective term for the sun, moon, and the stars. Um, so you're looking at the sun, you're looking at the moon, you're looking at the stars. Those are known as celestial bodies. Okay, so hopefully you've got those two things copied down. We're going to take a look at the sun here um, specifically. So the sun is the closest star to the earth sometimes people forget that the sun is a star um, it's an atmosphere of glowing hydrogen gas the energy comes from nuclear fusion reactions taking place between hydrogen atoms it's got an outer atmosphere called the corona that is visible only during solar eclipses so the corona is this uh interesting coronavirus uh this is where that the coronavirus comes from the coronavirus has um has a sort of well you guys have all seen the picture pictures of it it's got like a jagged thing around around the outside of it so this is the corona of a sun so there's a spot in your notes there for you to draw it so I'd like you to draw this so draw the the light patterns there the wave patterns there um, you also need to draw the sunspots so these are sunspots so I'd also like you to draw those out um, and these are dark regions on the sun that are just cooler regions on the sun. Um, now, the sun is 110 times the diameter of Earth, so it is way bigger than our planet. Um, this is a diagram here just showing the size of the sun. So we could fit 110 Earths um, across there. Um, and the temperature is 15 uh, million degrees Celsius, so pretty darn hot. Now, the planets. Uh, if we look at the planets, we've got inner out, uh, sorry, inner planets, and we've got outer planets. Um, now, again, this is a depiction of the solar system, our solar system here, but we know this is not to scale, right? Hopefully, you watched the video on that, so you know that, that is not to scale. Um, the inner planets. And then you can copy down this part here. Um, they consist of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So they're called the terrestrial planets because of their rocky composite. So they're made up of, of rocky substances. Um, the outer planets, on the other hand, this is Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These are mainly, they're composed of gases. Um, and they're, they're known for having many moons and rings. So I think you need to fill in gases there and moons in your notes for that one. Okay, so what about pure poor? Oh, you know what? Actually, you're supposed to draw a diagram there showing uh, the the orbit. So obviously this is not to scale, but just make sure you have a, a diagram showing uh, the order of the planets. So you know we start with Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, that these are the inner. And then from Jupiter out, uh, these ones are the outer planets. Okay, so just make sure you have a diagram like that. Uh, so what about poor Pluto? Pluto is like everybody's favorite planet, but uh, we don't talk about it anymore as a planet. So Pluto is known as what's a dwarf planet. A dwarf planet travels around or orbits the sun just like other planets, but it's basically just much smaller. Um, you don't need to write any of this stuff down, by the way, on Pluto. Um, Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto in 1930. He was an astronomer from the U.S. Venetian Bernie named Pluto that same year. She was an 11-year-old girl from England, um, and she named it after Pluto the dog from Disney. Uh, Pluto is not very big. It's only half as wide as Canada. So if you think of our country and the, the width of our country, it's only half as big, so that's pretty small. Um, it's actually smaller than our, our Earth's moon. So it takes 248 Earth years to go around the sun. 
So what that means, of course, if you lived on Pluto, you'd have to wait 248 Earth years to celebrate your first birthday. And one day on Pluto is about six and a half days on Earth. And I've always liked this diagram here. Uh, it's the sun with all its planets. And this is poor little plat Pluto here saying, I miss you guys. So, um, it's about 40 times farther from the sun than the Earth is. It's actually part of the Kuiper Belt. Uh, so that's where thousands of small icy objects like Pluto, but smaller, are in, they're in the Kuiper Belt and they orbit. Um, NASA decided to send... NASA decided to spend, send a spacecraft to fly close there. Um, the spacecraft's name is New Horizons, and it's about the size of a piano. And it launched in January 2006, and then about five years ago, in 2015, it flew by Pluto and its moon, and it took almost 10 years to travel that far from Earth to go to Pluto. Um, okay, so you can turn your page, and we're going to fill in notes on this side now. Uh, most motion in space are apparent. So that's the word there you have to write in. Apparent. This means that they only seem to be happening. They only seem to be happening. Um, so if we think of examples of that, like it, this is one you, you, we would see it happen every day and people talk about it, but it's, it's actually a misnomer, which means it's not actually happening. Um, what happens in the morning and what happens in the night? Yeah, we have the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun. However, is it actually rising and setting? No, it's our planet that's spinning. Um, so the sun is actually not moving, but Earth's rotation makes it seem like it is. Um, so you can put in, there's a couple things that you need to write in. Good. Um, so we're going to visit this concept of apparent motion as we move through this unit. So make sure you sort of understand what that is. Um, and that's just how it seems like something is happening, even though it really isn't. Okay, models of the universe. There are two main models that have been accepted throughout history. So some of the scientists that first proposed a model were Aristotle and Ptolemy. Um, the ancient groups were very, Greeks were very interested in astronomy and they proposed the first theory. So um, at this point, I would like you to watch the first video. And the first video is on Ptolemy. So it's on Ptolemy and Aristotle. And then you're supposed to just write down two interesting things that you see um, from the video. Okay, hopefully you've watched the video now. Uh, one thing that I thought was really interesting about that video was, was the quote of just because you can predict something does not mean you understand it. So they thought they were right because they were using their calculations to predict something, even though they were wrong. And that's kind of an important um, distinction. I know most of us have had that experience, say, in a math class where we get the right answer but we did it incorrectly. So we kind of just lucked into the right answer, even though we didn't actually understand it. Uh, anyways, we're going to keep going here. So the first model we're going to look at is called the geocentric model. So geo, if you take geography, you're studying the earth. So geocentric, centric would mean center. So this means earth centered. So geocentric <laughs> means, oh, my dog's barking. Geocentric means Earth-centered. Now, this theory was developed by Aristotle 2,400 years ago using only the naked eye. So this is pretty incredible that they were even able to do this kind of stuff using only the naked eye. So no telescopes, nothing like that. He stated that the following bodies orbited the Earth. So Moon, Venus, Mercury, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. These are the Roman names that we use, but they actually originally had names that were from the Greek gods. Um, so, but actually just to go back here. So what this looked like then, we had Earth, and you can sketch this in. If you look at the bottom there, um, you're supposed to sketch the geocentric model. So we've got Earth at the center, and then we have the rest of them. So you can fill them in, the rest of them uh, being or sorry, Moon, Venus, Mercury, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So these were all thought to have orbited the Earth. We know that's not true now, of course. Um, oh, there we go. There's our diagram. Uh, so you can copy that down there. 
Now, the, uh, you do not need to write these down. This is just kind of interesting. You might want to write down a couple of them there in the box for examples of Greek names. Um, so some of you who uh, maybe were into uh, Percy Jackson, you might know some of these things. So Mercury was actually Hermes, uh, the god of commerce. Uh, Venus was Aphrodite. Earth is Gaia. Jupiter was actually Zeus, the king of the gods. Um, and this was the largest planet. This is the largest planet in our solar system. So it was a good name for, for that planet. Mars is Aries, uh, which is the Roman god of war. Saturn, Cronus, the god of agriculture. Uranus, uh, from supreme god. And Neptune was actually Poseidon. Um, and this the uh, Neptune is a nice blue color, so calling it Poseidon was, was a good choice. And Pluto, Hades, uh, the Roman god of the underworld. Um, yeah, I find these things really quite interesting. If you're interested, there's there's classical mu oops, uh, music, Holst, the planets. So look it up. And it's got, and some of you who are in band, you might end up playing these songs. They're very common to play in bands. Um, the Jupiter theme, for example. So they've got different songs associated with the planets. And they largely follow these ones. So, for example, Mars is, is the bringer of war in this music. So, anyways, you might want to take a look at that. Okay, geocentric models continued here. Now... Uh, this will be the second page of your notes here. So Aristotle's model could account for most of the movement, but not for the occasional backward motion of Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So you're going to have to write that down there. Um, fill in the blanks there. So Ptolemy later accounted for this backward motion um, by stating that it was retrograde motion caused by epicycles. So you can fill in that word epicycles. And then we're going to draw a diagram of it. So what they thought was happening, and this was incorrect, but this is what they thought. Um, they thought that the planet was going and was looping around like this. So in your diagram, you can basically just show Earth here and then this planet and then just draw it like looping. So they thought its orbit was like this. And these epicycles actually did work to explain, like it was work to predict it, but they're not correct. And in fact, we know now that um, the Earth is not at the center of the universe. And, and that explains these epicycles here. Uh, so a more accurate model was still to come. Uh, so I'm going to save the rest of this for tomorrow because it will have a couple more videos I want you to watch one on Copernicus. Um, hold on, sorry. Yeah, Copernicus and Galileo. So anyways, um, that's it for today. So no assignment other than filling in all the notes and making sure you've watched all the videos. And then we'll have an assignment um, at the